ladies and gentlemen, Max here, and welcome to yet another episode of the GC Informer. As always, we have some interesting news stories to get into, so let's jump right in. In more Shadow of War controversy, it seems that the piracy protection program Denuvo has been cracked in less than 24 hours on Middle Earth Shadow of War. Now this isn't exactly unheard of. Games like Total War, Warhammer 2, and Sonic Mania have also had this happen, among other titles, and a lot of people are led to believe that this makes Denuvo useless. It really doesn't. Denuvo is more for sales protection in the first couple of days of release, because those, as you know, are the most crucial for game sales or for pretty much any form of media and entertainment. Anyways, the fact that it's been cracked this quickly isn't great news for Shadow of War. Again, this game has just been receiving all sorts of ridiculous news stories in the past couple of months, even though from what I know it's pretty fun. Speaking of more of that controversy, I'm sure you've heard about the loot box scandal regarding Shadow of War and honestly the entire gaming industry as of the past few months. You may have heard that these loot boxes are almost essential in beating the game as well. Regardless, it's been found out that if you decline the WB Terms of Service when you start the game, you'll be in offline mode and you actually won't have to deal with the loot boxes. You won't be able to do the online raiding of other players' forts, however, so that is kind of a loss. And also, I don't think that this really rebalances the game, because the game is balanced around these loot boxes. and. Turning them off doesn't really balance that, so either way you can't really win here. It kind of sucks. I haven't played the game for myself, so I can't comment on how essential these loot boxes are, but from what I've heard, they're pretty pay to win. Again, I haven't played it. That could not be the case. You know, word of mouth can be pretty skewed a lot of the times. So it's always important to check these things out for yourself, but regardless, they can be bypassed. Whether that's better or worse, is yet to be seen. Famed game developer Sweary has had a fig crowdfunding campaign for his new game called The Good Life going for the past 40 days or so. His goal was 1.5 million to work on this new title and unfortunately he only hit 556,000 and this crowdfunding campaign is ending by the end of the day Thursday so that really sucks for him but he's going to be taking it over to Kickstarter to try again. So not all hope is lost. Sweary tweeted out a few reasons he thinks the crowdfunding campaign didn't make it. One of the biggest reasons is that there was an initial leak of the game that didn't really portray what the good life actually is, so people kind of had a bad first impression of the game before they were even supposed to know about it. Apparently the reward tiers were also kind of screwed up. He just doesn't really seem to be happy with any of the information that went into this fig crowdfunding campaign. So like I said, he's starting over on Kickstarter. He's the type of guy who will get this game funded in one way or another. We'll just have to wait and see. The game does look interesting. For those who don't know, The Good Life is a murder mystery debt repayment life simulation RPG that has you playing as cats in a medieval time period. Well, sort of. They, they're people that turn into cats at night, and then they don't remember turning into cats in the morning. I don't know, sounds pretty freaking interesting to me, and definitely a unique enough idea to get crowdfunded. I wish Sweary nothing but the best. So sad news for Lawbreakers, as of yesterday, the game hit a peak of 10 concurrent players. Or would that be considered a low? Regardless, it hit 10. A game that came out two months ago that was generally well received by reviewers and that was hyped by none other than Cliff Blazinski had only 10 players play it yesterday. A multiplayer shooter that was $40. This is baffling to me. I don't understand why people haven't gotten this game. Like, it doesn't necessarily appeal to me, but it's the type of game that had a lot of hype around it. It had all the marketing. Everyone knew this game was coming out. I just don't understand why no one bought it. Like, it seems like the type of game that would have just done fine, not been uber successful, nor the failure that it really is. Even when the game launched, the player peak was like 3,000 players on Steam, which is not a lot. I'm pretty sure Lawbreakers is 5 on 5, and with 10 players, that's literally one match going on. Can you imagine that? One match! There are games that are years older than this that have more people playing it. It's absolutely fascinating. I wonder why this is the case. Regardless, hopefully Lawbreakers ends up turning around at some point. I really don't know what's going to happen with this game. I don't think anyone can really say. I know that Cliffy B has said he's very dedicated to keeping the game going and bringing players back in, but 
this may not be something they can recover from. Creator of the wonderful Beyond Good and Evil, Michel Ancel, has come out and said that after his game Wild and Beyond Good and Evil 2, he wants to bring Rayman back for a fourth adventure. This is of course disregarding the 2D adventures like Rayman Legends and Rayman Origins, this is Rayman being brought back to the 3D realm that we last saw in Rayman 3 HD, which was actually on Games with Gold last month, or maybe it's this month. Regardless, it was on Games with Gold, and I have it downloaded and I want to go play it. Anyways, he made a post on Instagram talking about this, saying that he's interested in bringing the Rayman character back for a fourth adventure, which is pretty cool. Now, this probably won't be for a very long time, because let's be honest, we're not seeing Beyond Good and Evil 2 for three, four years minimum. And then Wild, his other project, that's probably not going to be seen for a while. And Ray Rayman's just gonna, it's gonna be a while if this even comes out at all. Anyways, it'll, hopefully it'll be worth it, because this guy seems to have a lot of passion behind his projects, but passion doesn't always equal greatness. We'll have to see. Anyways, folks, that's about it for today's episode of the GC Informer. As always, hope you enjoyed. Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. If you want more of me, you can check out my Twitter or my YouTube channel in the links in the description down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more GameCast content, and we'll see you all soon.